Hello everyone, let's talk about All Soulsborne DLC and rank them from worst to best. After thinking for a while, I think that the worst Soulsborne DLC is Ashes of Ariandel. There are many reasons why I think like that. First of all, half of this DLC is just a reskinned version of Ashes of Ariamis from Dark Souls 1, which is not cool at all. Secondly, this DLC is just uh, stupidly short. Even if you won't just run through basic mobs, you will finish this DLC in one and half hour not counting your encounters will freed. Now about bosses. In this DLC let's uh, be honest there is only one boss because the other one is just a regular NPC with health bar plus a random no name dog which you will run down on your second attempt. Speaking objectively the only good thing in this DLC is sister freed and the fact that almost all mobs are new and aren't just the same basic mobs but with different armor color. Yeah, yeah, Sister Freed is a good boss, but one fucking boss for a whole DLC, even though she's a very high quality boss, uh, still, what the fuck is this shit? Also, the story of this DLC outside of Fringed City is a joke, let's be honest. Besides, a Freed, this DLC can go fuck itself. What a pathetic excuse of DLC. Now, Sunken King DLC. Ooh, where should I even begin with? <laughs> Honestly, if this video was based on my pure feelings, this DLC would be at the last place. What are the problems of this DLC? Well, uh, the biggest problem is that the story of this DLC is a completely joke. Not only this DLC has absolutely no connection to main game, just like Ashes of Ariandel, the story within the DLC is also a joke. In this DLC, you are running around in Sunken King's DLC and you always have a question, who the fuck is Sunken King? What happened to him? Was he eaten by sin? Did he sunk? Is a sunken king well stud? Don't know. And not only him, the story of Elana is also a joke. No really, she has absolutely no lore at all, besides the fact that she is another manus reincarnation and that she poisoned sin. No one in this DLC has a bit interesting lore, even sin, who is just another dragon whose life got fucked because Drake Blood Knights wanted to drink his non-existing blood. Bosses in this DLC are uh, gameplay wise ok. Sin is pretty epic but a bit annoying boss. Elana is a somewhat balanced and interesting gang or a duo boss and gang squad can go fuck themselves. Also I just realized all Dark Souls 2 DLC problems. They have two good or two high quality bosses and one absolutely dog shit boss who can go fuck himself. Who feels like they were added in this DLC because they thought that two bosses for DLC was a bit small amount. Why I put this DLC above on Ariandel? Well, first of all, this location is new and not just another reused version of another location from previous game or from main game. Secondly, it has some interesting moments. For example, in order to access Shula Sanctum, you have to climb on houses that you can move if you shoot or hit this stone thing. Things. In this DLC there are also ghost knights and I kinda like the idea behind those knights. They are fully immortal, no matter will what you hit them, they give no damn about it. But in this location there are their armor or their original body and as soon as you destroy them that's it. They no longer are immortal and I kinda like the idea behind it. Also I like how bow in this DLC feels like a part of your kit and not a tool that helps you to lure mobs and kill them one by one. In this DLC you need bow in order to activate a few buttons which is uh, somewhat interesting at least for me. Also bosses are placed in this DLC way too strange to be honest with you. Like uh, as soon as you enter in this DLC, unless you finish this location almost fully, you won't fight a boss. Elana and Sin are little through next to each other and I think that it would be better if Elana was in the beginning of this location or in the middle of this DLC and not in the end next to Sin. This uh, DLC also has a few new mobs which is cool but uh, that's pretty much it. Let's move to Ivory King DLC. Honestly I like this DLC but there are a few things that I really don't like about this DLC. First of all Frigid Outskirt. Secondly 
frigid outskirt. Even if everything was perfect in this DLC, I would still lower the point of this DLC because of the stupid location. Also, the road to the last Elion Lois Knight is just... Uh, yeah, we have to run through ice golems, Elium Lois knights, and the stupid bone will squirrel. I hate them so hard, oh my god. God, all those people who sell at bonus skeletons are a huge pain in the ass never played this DLC. In this DLC, for some reason, there are flexing sentry and Jabba hat, but will untolerant skin color. Yeah, I know that in scholar flexing sentries are removed, but why don't also remove this demon? What would this DLC lost if they removed him? And the thing I don't like about this DLC most is is the fact that this DLC, just like Sunken King's DLC, is 100% uh, filler that has nothing to do with main game. Like, it has zero connection to main game, which is not cool at all. Why I put this DLC above on others? Well, because despite the fact that this DLC has no connection to main game, it still has interesting story. I really like the story of Ivory King and Alsana. Avari King is the true hero and the king of Dark Souls 2. Unlike other kings, he managed to fade darkness in Alsana. He actually gave a damn about his kingdom. He sacrificed himself and his knights while holding back and beating everything fuck out of demons. And gameplay wise, he is uh, really cool. His boss fight is you and your small army fighting against Ivory King and his army of Elium Lois Knights, which uh, is very cool and epic. Elium Lois, both visually and gameplay wise, besides one very dumb moment, is a very cool and interesting location, in which there are a few new mobs that can really fuck up your day. And to be honest, this location is probably the best location in Dark Souls 2. Now let's talk about a bit uh, other bosses. Despite the fact that I somewhat like Ava as a boss, the fact that in this DLC, you can fight two reskins of Ava as a duo boss fight is just, um, yeah. Like, uh, what the fuck, in this DLC there are three bosses, but only one is a unique boss, really? And yeah, that's pretty much it. And now, Air 3 DLC. <laughs> And oh boy, prepare your asses. I know that many people are ready to cut their throat just to prove at least DLC is a 12 out of 10 DLC. But dear god, what a huge disappointment is this DLC. First of all, let's talk about a myth of huge content. I will explain it on this DLC map as simply as uh, possible. So all those people who say Dumb, dumb stuff such as this DLC is so big, there is so much content, like it's a full game. Will DLC price? Look at this map once again, and please tell me how is this a full game? Will DLC price? Please, I beg you, tell me. Yeah, the open world of this DLC is absolutely empty and there is nothing to do in it. And in order to somehow motivate you to explore this huge dead empty world, game devs added absolutely branded mechanic named Skadu Tree Fragments. Basically, you have two choices. Either you run around like a madman and search for the stupid three fragments or bosses will two shot you or even one shot you while you barely tickle them. Unless you use bleed katana on strength scale of course or any bleed weapon. Also at least 70% of all basic mobs if not actually more either are from base game or are just reskinned versions of basic mobs from base game but will one new move. 
move. Many people sell their many bosses, therefore this DLC is worth forty fucking dollar. And first of all, I would honestly completely remove or rework half of these bosses. I would completely remove Hog Rider, Finger Mother, Hippo, Sunflower and Radan. This DLC would be much better without them. I would also rework bosses like Local Orphan who is in Midir's boss arena and uh, maybe Relana because uh, they are way too similar to Orphan and Pontiff but will want new magical farts. And I would also rework uh, Romina because uh, no joke how many of you even remember about her existence and I would remove this dumb and absolutely branded magical nooks from Bale and Midra. Holy fuck fighting them sometimes feels like I am looking at the sun. They just burn your eyes with their dumb AOE anime spec effects. Yes, Bale looks cool, but only when you watch his boss fight on YouTube. When you fight Bale, well, I will show you how, for example, Midir's boss fight would look if he was in Elden Ring. And also because of boss's aggression and just unreasonably huge health bar, you have only two weapon choice, bleed or poison breaking monsters such as huge bonkers and also Sparta style. Everything else you can stick in your own ass. Also my personal thanks for loot in this DLC. When you are running around for a while and all you find are mushrooms, pods or smithing stones at level 1. Well, I don't even know how to describe this other than my big thank you Hidetaka, you are such a kind person. Now be good boy and suck my dick. Also, my big thanks to the plot and lore of this DLC. Why in this huge DLC will uh, so many bosses and NPC? There are only 5 interesting characters on whom someone actually gives a fuck. Pale, Mesmer, Mainly thanks to Marika, he is interesting, other than that he just well uh, okay. Marika became more interesting after this DLC because we got to see her past and why she hates Omen so much. Igon, mainly because when you summon him he screams at Bell and calls him a slut, one of Mog's followers and uh, surprisingly Mog. Yeah, after DLC Mog's story became much more interesting and funny. Everything else feels like it was written by the person who ran away from Arkham Asylum. Especially my big thanks for ending. No really, is there even a single person who liked this DLC ending? Like uh, you are running around raging all game just to see how even more fanboy version of Griffin is bitching in front of his brother's chair. And also, why Michaela gives zero damn about Malenia in this DLC? In main game, he wanted to curse his sister, but in DLC as it appeared, he either brainwashed her just like Mog, or he just forgot about his sister who is suffering from a space cancer. But despite all of that, many if uh, actually not all locations, art design wise, are very memorable and very good. Like uh, art design wise this DLC is just amazing and I don't think that there is another open world game with such a beautiful open world, uh, art design wise at least. There are many new weapons uh, from which 90% of them are useful only against basic mobs but still there are a few cool bosses, mainly Mesmer and if you just look on YouTube many bosses look very cool. You know what type of video I mean. 8k Revolution, some cool anime music, a very cool highlight moment and other stuff. <laughs> But like I said, this DLC has a serious problems, and this DLC is just not worth the forty dollar, no matter how you look at it. And people who sell the most dumbest and retarded stuff, such as for this DLC, 
I would give away $100 or and what at least is a $40 DLC. For example, Modern Warfare 3 is a full game and there is almost no content for a single player. First of all, all those people who say I would give away $100 for this DLC, you guys do realize that slowly but surely you are looking like average Assassin's Creed fanboys who will devour any garbage that game developers will drop on the ground, right? This DLC is a not worth $40 and all those people who seriously justify this will but but mother one fair fee but but mother one fair fee no you monkeys that's not how it works just because the last call of duty is a piece of shit it won't make mech dlc 12 out of 10 this is literally as if i shitted my pants in front of everyone and said yes i just shit myself but i am better than this dude over there why because he shitted himself even harder that's not how this works so please stop justifying this dlc with the dumbest arguments this dlc is is a 6 out of 10 at best. I was thinking about the number 4 for a while, but in the end I decided to give this place to old Iron Kings DLC. Why I think that this DLC is about than others? Well, first of all, in this DLC we have one as plus, one S, and if you don't give a damn about boss reskins, one A plus tier boss, and according to Elder Ring fans, infinity boss reskins are okay. I really like the story of Sir Alon and Fume Knight. One was a true hero of the Rangalik, who was betrayed by his own kingdom, and in the end, after losing in a duel against the Velstad, he swore to become stronger, and in the end he fell in love with Natalia, swore to protect her corpse and stay next to her for eternity. While Sir Alon was a close friend to old Iron King, who realized that his friend became a power hunger tyrant, and in the end he got backstabbed by his former king and friend. But karma is a bitch, so when a guild created smelter demon with the soul of Sir Alon, he took revenge on old Iron King and killed him while he was a mindless iron golem. Blue smelter demon can go fuck himself, Holy fuck, everything about him can go fuck himself. Yes, I said that he is a plus tier boss. And yeah, as a boss, he is a plus tier boss because he just a red skin of another A plus tier boss. So no shit that he is good. But his lore, which is identical to original Smelter Demon, and also his Ramba can go fuck itself. I also really like how this DLC, unlike other Dark Souls 2 DLC, is connected to main game. It's not super connected like other free DLC that will be later in this video, but this DLC gives a big background to bosses like Wendrick, Iron King, Velstad and Nashanra. Almost all new basic mobs design-wise are pretty memorable and they have interesting design, but there are a few things that I don't like about this DLC. First of all, the Rambak to Smelter Demon and Sir Alon is just way too brutal, like they are God, these rambaks are unironically harder than most Elder Ring DLC bosses. Not sure if you realize that, but in this DLC there are way too many ambushes. Like God damn, how many times I got jumped by a dude who was hiding in ash? Oh my god, it's not even funny. Also, this DLC has a few really dumb moments, like uh, really dumb moments, and my personal reason why I put this DLC below next three DLC. The key to this DLC, oh my god, I refuse to believe that someone got this key from these dumb salamandras without cheesing them will poison arrows. Oh my god. But how many times these stupid lizards killed me before I got this stupid key? Why is this DLC able on Elder Ring's DLC? Well, simple answer. Better have a brutal rambak on Blue Smelter Demon that will take you one hour to beat at worst than running around on a horse for 20 hours in a huge empty world just to find the 50 magical poos in order to even fight the bosses properly. I will be consumed by them, by the dark. The spread of the abyss must be stopped. Bronze medal goes to Artoria's DLC. First of all, let's talk about these DLC problems. This DLC location until all at chill is, uh, let's be honest, just a reskinned version of Darkwood Garden. Even basic mobs are from this location. But 
but unlike Elden Ring, they at least change their moveset. So it's not that bad. The only new moves are in Ola Chill after killing Artorias, and uh, there are only 5 new basic mob type if I remember correctly, if not actually less. Also, the Abyss is basically just a tomb of the giants on a crack, which uh, is not cool at all. Why I give this DLC a bronze medal? For a very obvious reason. This DLC is connected very well to main game. This DLC among all Souls games, um, how to say it properly, um, feels the most connected to main game I would say. Let me explain. All game we heard about the legend of Artorias. We are told that he was super duper warrior who sacrificed himself and almost single handedly stopped the abyss. But when we went in this DLC, it appeared that he actually lost to a beast. And not only he lost, he went mad and was corrupted by it. The one who stopped both corrupted Artorias and the abyss was the chosen undead. We are the hero of the past. We, by going to the past, don't look at how Artorias is bitching in front of Sif. We changed the entire story of Dark Souls. If we didn't interrupt it, the abyss would probably consume everything in this world. And the fact that we are the unknown hero who single-handedly saved and changed the entire world story is a very cool and a pleasant feeling. In this DLC we also saw other three elite queens warriors whose captain we killed in main game. We got to see how humans looked before Manus gave them appearance and also we saw how humans who consumed way too much darkness looks like. And most importantly, we saw Manus, the pygmy who is so easy to forget, with a dark soul. All these characters are very interesting. They aren't just a side characters who you kill because you are bored. No, they take an active part of this story, unlike 90% of Air 3 DLC bosses who are just a famous no names that have no connection to both main game and even to the plot of this DLC, who we kill because uh, why not. In this DLC, even if we remove plot and story, we have 1 A plus tier, 2 B tier bosses and 1 C plus tier boss. Yes, even though I prefer Sir Alon and Reime, and I'm not really a huge fan of uh, any of these bosses besides Manus. If we look at this game outside of other Souls games, DLC, sorry, these bosses will still be a bit challenging and interesting bosses, and probably they are the most interesting bosses in this game. If we don't count a few very meh moments, this DLC is very solid, but despite all of that, there are two other DLCs. Still that I think that are better than Artorias DLC. A corpse should be left well alone. Second place goes to Old Hunter DLC. Let's talk about bad moments first. Until we visit Ludwig, this location is dog shit. Like straight up dog shit. This is literally Yarna, but more bloody. All enemies before Ludwig, besides Hunters and one big dude before Lawrence, are just a copy pasted from base game. And even a few bosses are added in this DLC as basic mobs, which is not cool at all. In this DLC, we have one as Plus, 1 A tier, 2 F tier, and 1 over 5 boss. Also, this stupid location level design wise is just so annoying. Oh my god. How many times I died or was lost in this stupid location? It's not even funny. Why is this DLC so high? Well, just like Artoria's DLC, this DLC is also connected very well to main game. Yeah, it's not as connected as Artoria's or Ringed City, but still. In this DLC, we meet Lawrence, who is responsible for everything that happened in Yarnam. We met Ludwig, Orphan, and Lady Maria, who are very important characters for both this and for main game story. This DLC gave us a huge background to German, and we somehow can understand why he made a deal with the moon after the events of this DLC. And the main reason why I put this DLC so high is fishing high. 
Hamlet. This location we all adopt is one of my favorite locations among all Souls games. Not gameplay wise because let's be honest, you are just running for your life from the stupid giant fishes. The reason of that is art design and the lore behind it. This place is the Honor Londo of Bloodborne. But if Honor Londo was a peak of greatness in Dark Souls 1, this location is a peak of what the fuck just happened here? This place is so fucked up, it's hard to describe it will words. You can get what I say only if you played it yourself. Also despite the fact that I bang this location level design wise, art design and atmosphere wise, this location is also very good. The way these poor people are screaming and are begging for help, while you know that the only way to help them is to kill them and end their suffering, is just unforgettable feeling. All new basic mobs, especially in Fishing Hamlet, are very memorable. Yes, half of the time you are just running away from them as fast as possible, but overall they are very solid. Gameplay and the boss fights in this DLC is like I said very good. There is Lady Maria who is one of my favorite bosses among all Soulsborne games. We have Orphan who is very overpowered when it comes to difficulty, but this pilot he is also very cool and fun boss. We have Lawrence who is absolutely dog shit boss fight wise, but he has one of the best story and theme in this game. We have average Souls fans who spam skill issue get good as soon as you don't press their favorite game, and we have a Mr. Overfab who is the biggest disappointment and a joke in this game. This dude is incest and air one spam victim, like god Damn, he is so ugly and pathetic. Plus, I really like the music in this DLC, especially for Lawrence and Lady Maria. Overall, I really like this DLC, but there is one DLC that is better than Old Hunter's DLC. Hand it over, that thing, your dark soul. For my lady's painting. And the winner of this video is the Ringed City DLC, who could guess? Why I think that this DLC is the best? Well, there are a few reasons for that, but before that negative moment, fuck Dragon Slayer armor reuse, fuck this brain dead angels, especially on a release date in which they just spammed you till death, and fuck this stupid summoner with his army of ruined sentinels, Zulia the witch, and silver knight Ledo. Also a location before Demon Prince is, uh, well, not the worst, but the far from the best. Now about good moments. The rigid city looks just amazing. It's interesting to explore, and it's interesting to know the lore of this small and abundant city of pygmy lords, in which we will meet the youngest daughter of Gwyn, which he gave as a gift to pygmy lords in order to save his kingdom from the age of humans. The thing I like the most about this DLC in general is that it ended the story of Dark Souls as good as it could. This DLC is connected to main game and previous DLC plus minus well, and you can see easter egg to previous games everywhere. Arena of Demon Prince is abundant version of Falling Shrine from Dark Souls 1, this location is Mithra's castle from Dark Souls 2, and other small details. In this DLC everything screams that this is the end of everything. We fight the last demon, the last dragon, and most most importantly, Kael, a regular human who consumed the power of pygmy lords and the owner of the most powerful Dark Soul among all Dark Souls games. Yeah, I have my own questions about the ending of this DLC and uh, about this DLC in general, on which I want to make a small video, but overall this game answered the most questions that Dark Souls fans had, while added a few new ones. Hello Kath. Now about gameplay. Play. This is just a pick off from software. Almost all mobs are new, they have interesting design and moveset, and unlike Dark Souls 1 in which there are only 4 or 5 new mobs, in this DLC there is a solid amount of new mobs. Now about the bosses, and yeah, 1 S plus tier boss, 2 A plus or even S minus, and 1 F tier boss. They all besides Half-Light are very fun bosses with interesting moveset, but 
but unlike Elden Ring, you will never feel like they are unfair. When you fight these bosses, you fight these bosses, and not a dumb anime or a one shot hit that can hit you from the other side of the map. They have a reasonable amount of damage and health. Yeah, there is Demon Prince with 21k health, but to be honest, I never had a feeling that I am fighting any of these bosses with Tilt Brush, unlike uh, Elden Ring bosses, especially DLC ones. All three of these bosses, and especially Gael, who I consider to be the best Soulsborne boss, are very fun and interesting bosses against who when you die, you don't want to say, you know, I should probably use Mimic here and cheese them. If Artorias DLC got carried by its amazing lore and connection to main game, if Old Hunters got carried by its amazing atmosphere, the Ringed City is heavily carried by its amazing gameplay. Yeah, it's not a super long DLC, but this DLC, unlike Elden Ring, respects your time. You are not running around like Dora the Explorer and searching for 10 Giles seeds in order to fight bosses. If you want, go rush mobs and try hard bosses. If you want, you can slowly explore these locations. No one forces you to explore these locations. Do whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. That about you think about my video or which DLC you like the most. With this, I will say bye bye to you and I will see you next time.